How do we solve the problem of winter losses? If we solve the problem of winter losses, we won't have to be making up bees every year. So I started thinking, hmm, what do these winter losses have in common? All of the surviving hives usually have a young queen. The most common reason I found failed hives, I mean, they failed for a bunch of different reasons, but they almost always had an older queen. Or a spring queen made in March. These days, a year old queen is considered an old queen. Although I have plenty of great queens still going in two years. Why are the summer queens better than the winter? More drones available, yeah. Locally adapted drones, sure, there could be a, uh, I have no reason. Good weather for many flights, sure. Combination of all these things, drones raised in good conditions, queen cells raised in good conditions, great weather, often can equal a queen, made with a high number of high quality drones. The quality of your hive is often determined by the quality of your queen. So I made some summer mix. And this is just a five primitive bump. And it's got a feeder jar on here. The summer nukes require feeding. You make the summer nukes after the honey harvest in late June in this area. And there's very little nectar available for them to build up on. So they have to feed them heavily for uh, five or six weeks usually. In my first year, I did five. One of them got robbed out, so I had four nukes going into winter. And they all survived. I was ecstatic. In January, they were so full of bees, I gave them another new box on top to grow into. By February, there's 10 frames of bees in these, packed full of bees. And I put all 10 frames into a 10 frame box and added a honey super. Actually, it became a fruit super very quickly because they just raised fruit in the second box. After three weeks, I gave them another honey super. And a month later, I gave them another honey super. And at the end of April, I gave them another honey super. <laughs> Biggest honey producers I've seen. Always young queens in the following spring. So I was thrilled. But when you're making hives, you want to increase your numbers. Instead of making more hives in the spring and hoping for a crop and hoping they make it through winter, I try and make next year's bees in the middle of summer. If I can get them to overwinter happily with zero losses, or even a few losses, I'm thrilled. You can make divides in the summer and let the bees raise their own queens. Or you can raise queens from your best hives. If you've got one super queen, she's spreading her genes through the reproduction of drones. If you want to divide her hive, you may get a few hives two or three dukes out of that. But if you want to make more of that super queen, then you need to raise some queen cells. Okay. There's many ways to raise queens. I'm going to go into a, a few ways, a couple ways that small scale beekeepers can raise a few queens. If you just have a couple of hives and you want to make queens from one, it's very simple, it doesn't take any resources, you can make a few queens, um, not a problem. If you want to raise more than that, by 20 queens or so, uh, it's moderately easy. Um, you can do it without grafting, but I like to graft, and so I'm going to show you a little bit about that. And with those queen cells that you produce, that these produce for you, you could read queen and week, or your poor performing hive. You can also um, sell queen cells to your neighboring beekeepers if you like or give them away, better yet. If I have honey supers stacked on hives, and the hives are almost as tall as I am, and I harvest those, those honey supers in mid to the end of June, the hive becomes this tall. And all those bees are compressed into two boxes. I find that's a great time to make the divides. So I schedule my honey harvest in my brain, and then I start raising queens about two weeks before so that the queen cells will be ready to make the splits on the day of the honey harvest. So the, the queens should be hatching out the next day and nothing can alter my plan. 
Because if I miss that day, the wings all hatch. So. You have a single hive, and you want to make a few queen cells. If you, you need to remove the queen from your mouth, and just, you don't have to kill her. You can just put her in a nuke box on the side, give her a couple of frames of fruit, a frame of honey, and the next day, within an hour, usually most of these in her hive will know that she's missing, and they'll proceed to raising some queens, some supersedure cells, some daughter cells of her. When the queens will raise some of these emergency queen cells, right here in the middle of the brood frame usually, they'll draw out some queen cells. They may make two, four, six, um, rarely more than that. Uh, occasionally they only make one, but that's unusual. Once they've got some queen cells, about when the queen cells are bright, about 11 days, 10 to 11 days after you've taken the queen out of the hive, you make up your nukes. You don't have to make a lot of nukes. Depends on the number of queen cells that you have. Hopefully the queen cells will be on separate frames. So if you have three frames that have a queen cell on them, you can make three nukes. Two frames of brood, two frames of food. Make sure one of those frames of brood has a queen cell on it. And feed them. Three weeks later, check the nukes for the queens, for your main mated queens. And keep feeding until they fill out their nuke boxes. Any found queenless at this three week junction, you can replace those frames back into the other nukes. Because you started with four frame nukes. Two frames here and two frames here, and you make five frame nukes. You start with one hive, you've got two or three nukes on the side now. You can leave a queen cell in the original hive if you want, or you can put the old queen back in there with her bees. Just like she's in her own little nuke, you can put that nuke into the middle of the, the brood nest of the originating hive. If you want to make more than a few queens, crafting is an option. Now, there are ways to do it where the bees place the, um, the queen places the eggs in pre-made cells and, or um, you could cut cells out of the comb that already have an egg in them. But I'm going to talk about grafting. Grafting is where we remove a one little larva from a cell and put it into a, uh, a plastic cell cup. The commercial beekeepers, um, queen raisers, use this method because it's very fast and they can make thousands of queens a day. Take a queen out of a big, strong hive, remove all of the open brood cells from that hive, and the next day, put a frame that has eggs or the one little larva on top of that hive, horizontally, under a couple of spacers. Give them about an inch of room, and they'll build all these queen cells facing straight down, because that, that frame is laid horizontally. Then you can cut clean cells out to your cart to tent to make all your splits. So equipment needed to graft, to graft. You need a little bit of specialized equipment. You need a grafting frame to put the, the cell cups onto, you need, which is this, this is a cell bar with the cell cups on it. Um, a grafting tool to graft from the couple into the cell cups. It really helps to have magnifying lenses because these things are tiny. It's the tiniest, tiniest larva is the same size as an egg when you graft it. And the cell cups, and you need a really bright light to see down into the cells. You put the cell cups onto a cell bar. It takes about 10 minutes graft 20 cell cups. I put about 10 on a bar, and I use two bars for a grafting frame. I can graft 20 cells in about 10 minutes, yeah. You take the frame that has the youngest larva out of your hive, and shake the bees off gently, brush the bees off, so you end up with a, a frame with no bees on it. I quickly carry it to a warm room, from the kitchen usually, set up a headlamp with a bright light, put on magnifying glasses, and 
grabbed like crazy for 10 minutes. Before you grab, you have to have a place to put the, the grab immediately. So the day before, you set up your spell starter. This is a new box pack full of nurse bees. To get these nurse bees, you'll need several lives to shake off, to shake nurse bees off of some of these frames. You want to use a lot of young nurse bees. Approximately one to two pounds of bees will raise 10 ice queens. So we try to have four to five pounds of bees in the nuke box with a couple of grains of food and nothing else the day before I graft. So when I this up, this is the grafting frame with the cells on it, and we just slip it into the middle middle slot on the new box, on the cell starter box like that. So. These nurse bees need to be well fed, so I want two frames of pollen, one frame of honey, no open fruit or queen, of course, and we feed them nectar or, or syrup for a day, just to get those nurse bees engorged with honey and Bed rarer to rarer queen. So then you grab one day later, and this is what you get. After 24 hours, the nurse bees are starting to raise these queen cells on the cups. It's always fun when you see that. I grabbed 20 cups onto a frame, expecting to get. First time you do it, you'll be lucky to get five. Okay, I got three my first time, just because it takes a practice to graft the larva into the cells. And some finished queen cell. This is a pretty good take. There's a few misses here and there. You'll see some empties now and then. Eight percent take is considered very good. So you graft it into your new box full of nurse bees. Ten days later, you harvest your honey, divide up the colonies, and put a queen cell in every colony. I always leave a queen cell in the queen starter box just for an extra dividend. And you will be stunned by how fast these things grow in the spring. Every year, for years now, every year, my biggest, strongest colonies in the spring are all headed by young queens. When you read some of the things they say in the books are true, every book that I've read on beekeeping says, for the best hives, always keep young queens in them. But they don't all exactly tell you how to do that. I like it. Drone, drones mean the colony is doing really well. When you see big patches of drone brood and lots of drones in the hive, things are good for your bees. So how do we get more drones in our hives? Well, one of the ways is you can put a medium frame into a deep box, and they'll often draw, draw home on the bottom edge of the medium frame. The bees want to build the drones, and they will put them any place they can, and because the foundation doesn't have much, or any drone cells in there, they put them between the boxes. If you give the bees a place to build drone cells, you don't see that. This is a medium frame packed full of drone cells. On a deep frame full of drone cells, it's about two to three thousand possible cells. Now, queen, queen mating with the drones is, is often unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get. And I find in some areas, the queen mating is just horrible, if not impossible. And in some areas, it's almost predictable. Every queen, almost every queen gets mated properly. Weather has a lot to do with it. You expect that in some of your areas, you're not going to get great drone mating. I'm a queen, sorry. And I think that's the end.